Well, hello everyone, Don Balance here with another live Facebook tutorial from here at New Tech in San Antonio. And we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna run a month long series of tutorials that are all going to relate to each other. And we're gonna be talking about the Virtual Set Editor. Virtual Set Editor is an application that you can add to new tech video products like TriCaster and even the IP series that allow you to create not only your own virtual set effects, but they also allow you to create multi-layered video effects, double and triple boxes, and things along those lines. So let's start out by just taking a quick look at the TriCaster interface. When we fire it up, um, we do have an add-on section here, and add-ons is where the a software is going to reside. Now, there's a demo version when you first get your TriCaster out of the box. In order to use that version, you're not going to be able to save anything out of that version. Uh, you need to buy Virtual Set Editor and you can in install it on your TriCaster and the full version will become available. Now, Virtual Set Editor is available from the New Tech Web Store or from any of our resellers. And I want to talk about what you get when you purchase Virtual Set Editor. You get more than just the one application. You actually get two copies, two installable copies of Virtual Set Editor and two installable copies of Animation Store Creator. Now that's another application that comes with the TriCaster at no additional cost for creating transitions and frame buffer animations and things of that like. Now, uh, it's nice that you get multiple versions. You can install them and use them on the TriCaster like I'm going to be showing you today, but it also gives you the ability to use and install these applications on external computers. And as long as you put those external computers on the same network as your TriCaster or your New Tech Video production system, you'll be able to take the output of those uh, applications and bring them across to the network and use them in the live production systems. So let's just take a quick look. I'm going to go ahead and start up Virtual Set Editor. And again, it's here in the add-ons area. And we have installed the full version. Now, I have Advanced Edition because I'm running Advanced Edition on this uh, TriCaster 8000. So there is Standard Virtual Set Editor and Advanced Edition Virtual Set Editor. Um, of course, I highly recommend Advanced Edition. It gives you so much more flexibility and a lot more production value. Um, a lot more capability. So when we launch Virtual Set Editor, we are presented with this screen right here. And it's showing us a lot of content that comes along with the application. And this content is really here to kind of show you how the application works. It is usable. You can use it and adjust it. And uh, what I want to do is talk about the different types of content that are displayed here. So as we look through these different icons, some of them have VSE right on them. And these are pre-made virtual sets. And these virtual sets also are compiled and ready to use inside of your TriCaster. But these are the projects that were used to make those sets. And these types of virtual sets have things like reflections already built in. And uh, we can load them up. I'm going to go ahead and load up this primetime set. And it takes just a second to load up. It's actually loading up all of the different camera angles that have been created for this set. And once we get this set loaded, we can take a look at the interface and how it works. Now that we have this virtual set loaded up as a project, let's take a look at how the interface works. We do have our file pull down here, which gives us access to load and save and export. We do have a view pull down, which allows you to add overlays. These are just overlays on the interface. They're not adjusting the output. Things like center cross and safe areas can be added. And then we've got a help section giving you access to the manual and allowing you to check for updates for the software itself. Now, when a virtual set is loaded, again, this is one of our VSE virtual sets, the content that comes with the TriCaster. And if I mouse over any of these items on the side, they highlight inside of my preview window, allowing me to see exactly what it is I'm going to be working on. If I want to work on the desk and I mouse over the desk, the desk highlights and I can see, yes, I'm working on the desk. Now down along the bottom, we have our animation preset area for setting up uh, camera positions and animating between them once we get into the TriCaster or our video production system using the uh, fully animatable 
com composition engine. And then we have whatever camera angles have been set up. Now this virtual set is set up to use a center, a left, and a right camera angle. So they, those different camera angles are showing up down here. Now if you click on any of these camera angles, it takes a second to get there because it physically has to load that camera angle. Now, if I choose a camera angle, like the center angle here, and I make a change, uh, that will be reflected in the left and right angles automatically. So I'll give you an example. Right now, we have uh, our monitors in the scene here. I'm going to open this up, and there are actually two monitors. There's a left monitor and a right monitor. Now, this brings up another thing that we need to talk about. Depending upon the New Tech Live production system that you're using, your MEs may support different numbers of layers. So in a traditional, say, TriCaster Mini or, say, a TriCaster even 460 with standard edition, you can support two layers in a virtual set. Most of the time, this would be the talent and maybe an on-screen monitor. Now, if you take that 460 and you add advanced edition to it or you get up into an 8000 or into the IP series, the MEs can handle four layers. So now you can do A, B, C, and D. So if I'm looking at this particular virtual set, if I'm working within a two-layer environment, this is all I can do. B is going to be what's on both monitors, and A is going to be my talent. But if we happen to be working in a four-layer environment, you could take one of the monitors, for instance, and open its variables, and you have the ability to change what's being shown on that monitor. And I'm going to say, I want to see input C on that monitor. So now, I am using three layers, A for the talent, B, and C for the monitor, and I still have a fourth video layer to work with. Again, if I'm working in a 460 with advanced edition or an 8000 or an IP series. Now, I've changed this monitor in the center, and we'll go ahead and load up the right-hand camera angle, and you'll see that that change is also uh, shown in any of the different camera angles that we're going to be using. Now, I want to put a logo on the front of the desk here in this particular one. I'm going to close my monitors back down and I want to work with the desk. And I'm simply going to open the desk up. Now here we have the ability to uh, look at the logo that's on the desk. You don't see this logo until you open desk. Now when you do, you then get the logo is available to you here and we can go ahead and put an image. Now if you don't add your own image right here, when you render this set, it's going to say insert image. This is an actual image. So you either have to remove that image or replace it with one of your own images. Now an easy way to just get rid of the logo on the front of the desk is to turn it off. And every element has a little check mark by it. So I could turn that logo off. It's going to be gone. And again, I even have two monitors. And if I want to, I could turn one of the monitors off and remove it from the set. So a lot of modifications can be made just by adding or removing the elements that are already in the set when you bring it up and use it. So let's go back to our logo and turn it back on. And we're going to just browse. And we're going to look for a logo. I've got a new tech logo right here. And I now have that logo shown to me on the front of the desk. I have some positioning tools down here. I can scale that logo. You see it's real-time reflection in the floor. And if I position the logo, you'll see that the logo is actually wrapping on the desk, which is also a nice feature which could be used if you wanted to have a graphic that would wrap all the way around the front of the desk. That's totally possible as well. So, that's some of the basic modifications that we make to the set. Uh, another thing people very often want to do is to be able to replace the background here in the set. So to do that, we're going to be looking at our windows. And this particular set has three windows. So if I'm going to put a background scene in it, I'm going to need three images that come from a panoramic image that have been cut up. So for instance, I have some of those. I'm going to go to the left-hand window here. And inside of the left-hand window, I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to browse for a new source. And I happen to have some panos that have been chopped up. And we'll go ahead and use Vegas. And here's the left-hand image. And that shows up in my left window. But it's a little small. That's OK. I'm going to go ahead and scale it so that it fills the entire window. Now I can, go to this, I can close that window down and go to the center window. Do the same thing, and we are going to choose the center portion. We're going to scale that up just so that it fills the window. And we can see that our horizon looks pretty good here in the background. We go to our third window,
and we choose our third image and scale it up as well. So now we've got our changed background. We're now in Vegas. I can even modify these images and look at how they look coming across, make sure I've got a, a contiguous look from window to window all the way across the set. And this set is basically ready to be exported as a customized set with reflections. So to export this set, we would come up to our file area and we would say we want to export to this TriCaster. Now if I try to do that, it's going to say that I need to save this project first. Now saving the project is not saving the set for use in the TriCaster. It's saving the project so that I could bring it back up in Virtual Set Editor to make additional changes if I want to. So we'll just call this Demo Prime and save it. And that saves the project and then goes ahead and exports the set for me because that's what we asked it to do. It's exporting each of the camera angles separately and then we will have three different camera angles for use once we get back into the TriCaster. Now that we've exported the set, let's go back into the TriCaster's live production environment and take a look at what we've got. We're going to exit out of Virtual Set Editor and we're going to start up a TriCaster session. I'm going to go into ME1 and let's load up the first set angle that we're going to have. And again, if we look at live sets and we come all the way down here to user, we can see that we have our set set out. Here's Demo Prime. This is the one I uh, set out and exported. So I'm going to load that up. Let's look at ME1 and see what we've got. And you can see that we've got our two monitors and we've got the place for our talent. So let's go ahead and fill that up. Now, once we get the set loaded, this is a three layer set. It presents us with three layers and that's what we created. Uh, layer A is for the talent and I'm gonna be pulling the talent from buffer number one. There we go. And then the other uh, layers are gonna be DDR1 and DDR2 to fill our two screens. Now again, we do have the ability to move around this virtual set and set up different camera positions and animate to them. Now again, we set up three different angles of this set. If we go to ME2 and we look at ME2, we can set up the next camera angle. Down here under user, here's our left camera angle. And again, we would set it up the same way, putting our talent in and I would have to have talent shot to fit the set. I'll just throw myself in there for this one and go DDR1 and 2 so that you get the idea. So now we have two separate camera angles of this same set that we can work with and we actually have three because we saved all three of them out. So that's just basic modification of one of the VSE template sets that comes with Virtual Set Editor. Well I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you and we're going to have a lot more to talk about with Virtual Set Editor as this month goes on. So make sure to tune in next week for the next installment on Virtual Set Editor from Facebook Live here from New Tech in San Antonio. I'm Don Balance and thanks for watching.